When we're asked to find all rational zeros, all it means is take the function, set it equal to zero, solve for x. That's all it means. Only thing is, when we have an equation or a function of degree 4, it could be a little intimidating when we're looking for the zeros. But with a little time and patience, we could do it. Here we go. First, let's go ahead and set the number 3, the coefficient of x to the 4, be the value of q, and find all the factors of q, or factors of 3, which are 1 and 3. Next, we want to set 12, be the value of p, and find all the values, uh, all the factors of p, or factors of 12, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Then, using the values of p and q, we're going to be finding the possible rational zeros. And to do that, we're going to be doing plus minus p over q. All the combinations that we have of p and the q's, so we're going to do it, and 1 and the 1, notice the 1 goes on the top from the p, and then 1 from the q goes in the denominator, while keeping the 1 or the p in the numerator, we now have the 3 in the denominator. Next, so we're done with the 1, and then we're going to take the 2, plug it in to the numerator for the value of p, and then we're going to be using the 1 and the 3 for the denominators. So notice the plus minus. Altogether, because we have two, factor, two values of uh, factors for q and six factors for the value of p, we have a total of 12. However, because it's plus minus, we have 24. Here's the good news, though. Because the 12 over 3 is the same thing as 4 over 1, we could eliminate that. Also, 6 over 3 is the same thing as 2 over 1. We could eliminate that as well. And then the 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So we could eliminate that value also. Then, we now have a total of 9 values times 2 because it's plus minus. So we have a total of 18 possible rational zeros. Then, of the 18 values that we have, one or more will actually equal to x. Since we know that one of these numbers are equal to x, we're going to be using the synthetic division to find out which one. So we got 3, negative 10, negative 9, 40, and negative 12. And with the synthetic division, I'm going to start with the value of 2 as a guess. Let's say if 2 is one of the zeros for the function. Synthetic division, here we go. 3 goes on the bottom. 2 times 3 is 6. Add it up, up and down, so I get a negative 4. Multiply the 2 and the negative 4, so we get negative 8. Add it up, up and, up and down, I get negative 17. 2 times negative 17 is negative 34. Again, add it up, up and down, we get a 6. And then 2 times 6 is 12. Add it up, up and down, we get a 0. And the very last number is always the remainder. And since the remainder is 0, we know that 2 has to be one of the values of x. Then the 3, negative 4, negative 17, and the 6 we have, it means this. We have 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 17x plus 6 will be a factor of that function. Notice we started with the function of degree 4. We're now down to a degree of 3 or cubic function. Next, we need to go ahead and once again find the value of x using the p and the q like we did before. So the q will be 1 and the 3 or factors of 3. p will be 1, 2, 3, and 6 or factors of 6. We're going to list all the p over q. Again, p over q will be plus minus 1 over 1, plus minus 1 over 3, plus minus 2 over 1, plus minus 2 over 3, plus minus 3 over 1, plus minus 3 over 3, plus minus 6 over 1, and plus minus 6 over 3, with all the combinations from the q's and the p's that we have. Then, as we did before, 6 over 3 is same thing as 2 over 1. We're going to eliminate that. 3 over 3 is same thing as 1 over 1. We're going to eliminate that as well. Then we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Or times 2 because of the fact that it's plus minus. We have 12 possible values of zeros. 
How do we figure out which one? We're going to do the synthetic division again. We start with the 3, negative 4, negative 17, and 6. And which number are we going to start by dividing? I'm going to be using the 3 that we have. It may work, it may not work. Let's find out. So if we start and divide it by 3, again, the 3 comes down. 3 times 3 is 9. Add it up, up and down, we get a 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Add it up and down, we get a negative 2. 3 times negative 6 will be negative 6, and we get a remainder of 0 once again, which means that we know for sure that 3 is one of the x values as well, or one of the zeros. We're almost done. Don't go yet. Next, we have 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 from the numbers that we got from the synthetic division. What it means is that 3x squared plus 5x minus 2, once again, is a factor of the function. Or if we set that equal to 0, we could find rest of the zeros or the values of x. So if we factor this, it's going to be 3x minus 1 times x plus 2. Then from here, we get x equals to 1 third or negative 2. All right, we're done. Here are the values of x then. x will equal to the 2 that we found in the beginning, or the 3 that we found from the second synthetic division, or the 1 third, or the negative 2. So here are all the zeros of that function.